Things in general. She was a very good dear friend. Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, I got soft two more plates there. So she was. Uh, right, let's just check this out. She was a very good dear friend, as well as a chef and mentor. And so I wanted to come to Chicago with not just any old plain dish, uh, because I love her so much. I wanted to do something that she would stick her fork into and say, okay, I think this is pretty damn good. Uh, so what you have is I did a chicken thigh organic, took the bone out. I needed all these 50 students that we had here tonight. They weren't here last night. Uh, I deboned all the chicken legs, and then what I did was cook what I consider the Edna Lewis collard green, uh, which is made with a little crushed tomato, garlic, shallot, vinegar, uh, pork, of course. Chef Paul gave me some special pork from the walk-in that really made the flavor explode. And sweet breads, and then I bound that together with a chicken mousse, and then that was wrapped in call fat, one by one. Uh, and then we did some hominy grits, which are strong ground grits. Um, cooked for a very long time. It took about six hours for those to cook. And then a little Parmesan Reggiano. And then I put a little French soul into it. The sauce is a sauce that Jean Louis, one of my first sauces, and I learned how to make from him in 1988, Jean Louis Bourdain, was uh, a comfy garlic sauce uh, with a fond of all. So, bon appetit. Hope you enjoy. All right, so when, when Washburn shows up, we show up as a team, right? And basically, what you're seeing is um, food prepared by our Dharma J classes. Dharma J means keeper of the cold, or. Um, you know, this is where you have the, the various techniques as far as the duff and wild potato that you saw. Um, slices of uh, sweet potato with um, garlic and heavy cream, right? All set by um, the smoked um, pulled pork with the Jack Daniels sauce, um, the pork belly and some georgine with wine. Um, and then the chow chow, our version of chow chow, the turmeric. <laughs> and so, so, so when Chef Randall called and kind of gave us this project, you know, he was like, man, this guy's not getting back to me. But you know what? It's a team event. So I had to make sure that I assigned the right activity to the right class, make sure that everybody participated. Because part of what you're seeing is our students are going out there, they're getting exposure to everyone, the different parts of the city. Um, you know, kitchen is a kitchen. You know what I'm saying? So. They have a full understanding of what's going on in the industry. Outside of this, they're always out there on the um, within the, the restaurant scenes, seeing what's going on, making sure to bring it back to school, making sure that they they hold a space out there for the next leaders of the culinary as far as when they graduate. So I appreciate you appreciating the food and for Chef Paul for having us here tonight. I'm the executive chef at uh, Frontier here in Chicago, uh, a restaurant that specializes in a lot of wild game, a lot of adventurous eating, a lot of whole animal roast. So we roast a whole pig, a boar, a goat, a lamb, an alligator. We deliver that to your table side. We carve a table side. 
along with all the sides and the fixings. Uh, I'm originally from New Orleans, so I love love Southern food. It's a, it's a great honor for me to be here. Um, what you're eating today is a warm butter bean salad. Uh, butter beans are something that are very dear to me. It's something I grew up eating. Uh, my grandma would make them all the time. Um, wild boar bacon um, that we have, we cure and make in house. Um, some crawfish, a little bit of tarragon. Uh, the vinaigrette has some sherry in it, uh, mixed in with that uh, with that boar with bacon. So watercress on up, up top, and that's it. Thank you very much. Take a second to uh, just give you a description of the meal. I know you have the menus, but I just want to give you a con about the concept, how it uh, came up with the, with the menu idea. I used to do a, a similar menu, how I, I did it with beef cheeks. But with it being a, a soul food or southern food cuisine yeah. and themed menu, I wanted to use something more southern. So I, I chose oxtails. Now the irony of the dish is, Will it hold up? Is it enough fat? Is it enough collagen in the, in the oxtails to hold up to the heat? So what, what, what I did is I braised them for five hours with carrots, onions, celery, uh, red wine, garlic. Um, just typically braised them like we all, always do. Um, after that, I let them cool a little bit, took all the meat off the bone, tried to remove as much fat as possible, but I wanted to leave some because I wanted to still be moist. So hopefully, hopefully we did a good job on that. So on the compressed oxtails, what we have is is a celery root uh, puree, um, celery if you're French or if you've been in France. Uh, so we just made a little bit of chicken stock, little onions, a little garlic. Uh, just bring that up to the wall simmer, and then just puree it. Um, we also have uh, some little tartlets. We have uh, squash, zucchini. We have uh, baby carrots. Uh, you, you may wonder why some, some people have an orange carrot, some have a white, and some you don't know what it is. But that's actually a purple carrot. <laughs> so, so we have a white carrot, an orange carrot, and a purple car carrot as well. And we just accompany that with a, with a, a, a reduction of the sauce. The same, the same liquid that, that we use for braising, I actually just strain all of that off, reduce it down, and there you have it, voila. Wow. which is the uh, Mississippi deep fried catfish, southern style hoe cakes, I did a little pickled Bermuda onion, and a red hot pepper relish. So uh, these recipes are in my cookbook, so you feel free to take it home with you and make it tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Enjoy. How's that piece cobbler? Well, as, as you guys know, you know, this we call this Uncle Billy's uh, peach cobbler. Yeah, uncle Bill is my uncle, obviously. Uh, what we've tried to do is tweak uh, recipes, but some things you just don't bother, right? Like, you, some things you just don't switch around. So for us, what we wanted to do is make sure that you know you close your meal off on something that was good and delightful and, and hopefully memorable. We, we just opened a, a breakfast restaurant called Peaches, and actually it's Peaches the person, not the fruit, but we couldn't be on 47 and King Drive and not have peach cobbler. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys will be able to come on down and have some of that. So I'll, thank you for, for having us this evening. Let's uh, me once again, on behalf of the Edna Lewis Foundation, Big Jones Restaurant, and Paul and Mark, we want to thank you so much for coming out and uh, just we hope that you've had a memorable enjoyable yes. Yes. experience this evening and to honor these wonderful chefs who have put in the time and energy and effort to make what you tasted taste good the Edna Lewis Foundation would like to give them a little token of our appreciation Jennifer Ann Booker appreciation for your outstanding culinary achievements in the 
practice of authentic Southern cookery and genuine unwavering support for the Indian Lewis Foundation at Big Jones Restaurant, Chicago, Illinois, on the third day of March 2015, uh, in testimony to the Board of Directors of the Indian Lewis Foundation and myself, Chairman Joseph Randall. Thank you. In 2008, Big Jones had just opened um, at the suggestion of some, a couple of guests. I read a book called The Taste of Country Cooking um, by the woman in whose honor we're having dinner tonight. And uh, The Taste of Country Cooking was written in 1976. Well, maybe written a little bit before. It was published in 1976. Um, and for someone who's been cooking as long as I have, it was it was really revolutionary to learn about this woman and to read about her cooking. And in the Taste of Country Cooking, she's talking about the food ways she grew up with in Freetown, Virginia, which would have been probably, I always guessed, the 1920s, uh, before she left home uh, at, at the age of 16. And uh, you know, you can read, read Joe, Joe may tell you more about her. Uh, you may all know already. Um, there's information on the website, but this book was written in seasonal menus in 1976. There was a fateful meeting between Edna Lewis and a chef called Alice Waters at an event in New York City way back when. Edna Lewis was cooking seasonal American food in the 1950s. Alice Waters started doing it in the 1980s. Um, the Taste of Country Cooking was written before Chez Panisse and Alice Waters had any pretensions of seasonal American cooking. And um, I mean, I think in the company we're in tonight, I can say, you know, it was, it was very influential for me to think about uh, all of American history, um, issues of cultural co-optation and, and all of these things, but you know the history books are written by the people who get to write the history books and who get to be published and have their, their story told. And I thought to myself, well, you know, why isn't this woman's story being told? Um, and a couple of years later, maybe four years, five years later, a couple of years ago, um, I got word by, via Twitter that the Edna Lewis Foundation had gotten its 501c3 status, which made me really excited. So I went to the website and I bought a couple of books because I always like keeping uh, extra copies of Miss Lewis's books around. And uh, made some really small donation. Uh, the next day, uh, my phone is ringing and it's this guy here <laughs> uh, thanking me for uh, you know, thanking me for reaching out um, for the donation and for buying the books. And uh, we struck up a friendship, and, and uh, Joe and I have been in regular contact for a couple of years now. Um, we come from very different backgrounds, but I think that what, uh, I think that what's important to both of us is this idea of coming together around food, and there's, there's nothing more, um, there's nothing more that, that we could all share uh, that reminds us of everything that we have in common and everything that we can celebrate. 
and I want to really thank you all. For me to be able to do this dinner tonight and to have these chefs here uh, is a dream. So thank you all for your support. Without it, we couldn't do it. And I'd like to thank Chef Joe for the foundation and for uh, probably doing a lot more work than I did to get this thing going. So. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. I was too aware that you could be home somewhere, either snuggled up or wrapped up and warm, uh, other than out here with us tonight. So we do appreciate you coming. I want to thank these chefs who have uh, worked diligently to help me and help all see that this becomes a memorable evening for you tonight. Um, Chicago has a warm and wonderful place in my heart. I have some wonderful food memories from being right here in Chicago. I'll be a little brief, but in 1996, I guess it was, I brought in to, to Chicago. We came for the African Festival, and we did cooking demonstrations for three days. And I just had a ball personally with her, taking her around Chicago eating. We went to Gladys' luncheonette. And, and I never will forget it as long as I live. She acted like a little kid giddy when she looked down on the menu and saw scrambled eggs and brains. And, and she just got excited, but that's what she ordered. And that's what she ate. Gladys was grateful enough to come out and her and her husband and meet her and we spent a lot of time around the city just enjoying Chicago. I have many friends here tonight, uh, some that I met in Chicago, some that I met out of the country and I very seldom come to Chicago unless I see them behind me and I don't want to call a lot of names but Miss Nancy Ross Ryan who's been a mentor and dear friend and her husband John for years. 1984, Restaurant Institution wrote an article, A New Breed of American Chefs. And there were 21 chefs in the article. And not one of them was of color. So I took exception to the article and I wrote the publisher and I told him that this article reflected the way American history had been written, as if African Americans were invisible. The publisher at that time, what was her name? Jane Wallace. Miss Jane Wallace wrote me back. She said, thank you, Chef, for the gentle reprimand. <laughs> she, said, she said, Nancy will be in touch with you. <laughs> and she did call me. I didn't let them off the hook. I sent them a personal list of 50 African American chefs around the country mm. who I told them that I was sure would cooperate should they decide to do another article. And Nancy proceeded to put that wonderful article together called Black Chefs in America. And I still cherish it today in her friendship. But I have John Carchi, is he where you at, John? No, I'm here. <laughs> John, John, John's a chef, graduated from the CIA years ago. He used to be a chef at the Bismarck Hotel here in Chicago. And uh, he and I both were sergeant of arms together for the American Culinary Federation some, so many years ago that it's hard to remember. <laughs> but uh, I'm just, you know, it's, it's a joy to be here in Chicago. I tell people everywhere I go, Chicago is a wonderful food town. People love food, so I couldn't think of any place better than to come and try and do something to honor Edna. So uh, in October, the post office was even smart enough to recognize it. They came to Chicago to unveil the stamps, first celebrity step stamps with Julia Child, Joyce Chin, Felipe Roja, Lombardi, James Beard, and Edna Lewis. So in November at the Food and Wine Festival in Savannah, I asked Paul to come down and Jennifer, who I introduced you to me, and we sat on a panel discussion with Maddie. Raise your hand here. 
with her mother, Miss Edna's sister. That's her niece. Uh, Miss Edna's sister, 92 years old now, I guess. 91. 91. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But she, she came to Savannah 91 years old by herself and was on the panel with us. And so uh, it is the goal of the foundation to honor Edna Lewis's memory and uh, to continue to uh, make people aware of the contribution that African Americans have made to food in America. With that said, I'd like to introduce some wonderful chefs, some here locally. Chef Clifford Rome, right here in front. We have Chef Timothy Dean. Yeah. Timothy and I go way back. He was on Top Chef a few years ago. He's had restaurants in Washington, D.C. and he now has TD Burgers in D.C. But he had the privilege to be in the kitchen with Edna Lewis, Leah Chase, Patrick Clark. All of us were in D.C. together back in the 90s. Miss Jennifer Booker. A wonderful young lady, a great cook, and a marvelous chef. She and I have become close friends, and uh, I don't know, I think I was in Charleston doing a seminar for a couple of days with a, some kind of retreat for educators, and she was there. And one day she kind of showed up in Savannah and said, she want to hang out with me all day. And, uh, I have been trouble getting rid of her. So. But it's a, it's a joy. It's a joy. And she has a wonderful book, Feel Peace to Fagra. And I know personally that she worked hard on it, and it's a wonderful book. The next gentleman there is uh, Chef Dwight Evans. Uh, Ebony Magazine did a taste of Ebony in Atlanta, and I first got to meet Dwight. And he's a wonderful cook and a dear, dear friend, and we're happy he's here to help us tonight. We have Brian Jupiter next. I kind of, I kind of admired Brian from afar, but now I've gotten the opportunity to get up close. So he's in trouble from now on. <laughs> uh, we both appeared in uh, Upscale Magazine in an article back in December. So I was happy to be in the good company at that time. And we have Christopher Murray. <laughs> Christopher obviously has worked in some wonderful restaurants around the city, but he now is the the brains or the head and the heart between, behind the, the culinary program at Washburn. So we're so proud of So we want to thank you once again for taking the time out of your schedules and coming out here tonight. And with, uh, without any further fanfare ado, we're going to ask the chefs to Go back in the kitchen and do the part that you came here for. <laughs> Send you something to eat. So thank you so very much.